Hello and good morning. Yes, you are back with the crew, and boy, what a week. Can you imagine? I dropped a w video last Wednesday that many of you watched. Thank you so much. Uh, that thing blew up, and I really appreciate you all uh, for being part of the army, part of the crew, part of the gang, part of crypto in general, and your unwavering belief in its future and what we uh, all have created consciously, subconsciously together to make this thing uh, what it is. Um, the powers that be are, are falling like dominoes to uh, the energy of you and I believing in a better tomorrow through crypto. Today, I want to talk about everybody's concerned about the FUD and the craziness and the negativity. And I had people calling me, boy, was I in the fun. There were so many people telling me, oh, this is a bad thing. And Alan, you don't understand. We don't need XRP anymore if we have this stable coin and you don't get it. And I'm like, no, 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 slow down, slow down. I said a long time ago, and you can look the video up. I did a video about it. It's really about stable coins are bigger than anybody understands for number one. And it's the big elephant in the room that nobody's talking about. I don't hear any other channel that, you know, I don't know, maybe they are, but maybe, maybe they should really get this one big point. And I don't want this to sound too negative or anything, but the banking system, okay, the big bankers in the sky, all right, who, the puppeteers, they have been saying to us for a long time, we don't want crypto. We don't like crypto. We don't, we don't really care for this. We don't want Bitcoin to be the future of all money. We don't want XRP to be money. We don't want all that. We don't want, that's not the real point. <laughs> I got dogs fighting it. You know, it's difficult to video when I got dogs in my crotch trying to uh, chew on each other. Yeah, it's a risky, it's a hazardous site here. So I'm, I want to talk about that in, in a banking sense. Stay with me. I know I'm, I'm not being real clear right now, but I will. In a banking sense, they don't like crypto to begin with. That's what we've been taught since day one, since Bitcoin was created, since XRP was created. Okay. Um, that's not accurate. They don't care if we trade tiddlywinks. Well, that's a blast from a path. Anyway, uh, they don't care if we shells or diamonds or whatever. To, to, to them, it doesn't matter. What matters to them is control, regulation, having uh, people who are underneath their roof so that they can manage the money, so that they can profit from the money. They get their skim. They get their profits. I talk about the six to seven trillion dollars in transactional fees. They really want a big part of that. They want the regulation. They want to know where your money's going so that they can make sure they get their taxes from it. Uh, that's really what the system wants to know and have. We all know all that. This is trying not to be a negative video here, but you guys all know all about all of that. The big picture in the elephant in the room that nobody's talking about is what banks really, really care about. And that is one thing that nobody said. Well, once you get to it already, it's called fractional reserve banking. I know many of you have heard of it. In fact, all of you have heard of it one time or another. That's the big elephant in the room that nobody's talking about with this whole stablecoin thing. Let's remember, Stable coins don't just promote crypto. In Tether's case, they really are, have backed Bitcoin through this whole thing. But, and what's going to happen now is they're 100% guaranteed behind asset. It's going to be gold. It already is gold. You look at what Tether owns. Tether, I just heard the other day, Tether owns over 75,000 Bitcoin. That's a lot of Bitcoin. They have bonds. They, they are backed by everything 
asset value dollar to dollar for a dollar equal trade. What's the big picture there, Alan? Well, that's exactly, right, what Caitlin Long's trying to do with her bank. And why do they keep shutting her down? Why do they keep doing that? Because she wants to be 100% backed by a real asset product, which is what banking used to be. We're talking a thousand years ago now. They do not want this. Why? Because that would mean they would have to have real assets under their roof. They don't have any real assets. You and I know they don't have anything under the roof. As soon as everybody walks into B, uh, B of A and says, or doesn't even walk in now on their phone, I want to withdraw all, my, all their money. They're gone. They're done. Collapse. Kaput. Done. History. It's over for them. So what are they going to try and do? Now I'm referring back to my video. I said that all banks, all corporations, all brokerages, everybody will create their own stablecoin. They will need to, to, it's in the word, stabilize themselves and buy up assets as collateral. You know where this is going, guys. They're going to need Bitcoin for collateral. They're going to need Ethereum for collateral. They're going to need XRP for collateral. And even Cardano and the rest of these, they're packaging these up now as we speak. These are going to be the new collateral of the future because they can't take enough gold up. They're already, central banks are already getting involved with that. How is B of A going to compete with the central banking system and buy enough gold? They can't. So where are they going? They're going to crypto. They have to go to crypto. But again, they, banks don't care what they trade. Banks don't care what you call the money money. That wasn't their big concern. Their big concern is the fact that they can't times their money by 10. Oh, oh okay. You bring a dollar in and deposit and we can loan $10 out. That's what they care about. This is what they're losing. This is the giant gorilla in the room that nobody's talked about for 15 years in crypto. In particular, well, since stable coins especially, that's their big monkey on their back and then want a part of it. And they're like, oh no, because we really like the way this thing is going. We can create as many digits as we want to and we don't even have to back it up. We don't have to support it or back it up or collateralize any of it. And then this tether guy comes along. It's an issue for them. This is why Pocahontas is completely bought by the banking system for her to get in there and make sure that this slows down. We regulate this. We get our hands on this. We wrap our minds around it. We get caught up to what's happening here. It's really big and it's bigger than people understand. But the neat thing is, is when, you, when they start coming to see what you and I own and what we believe in and what we see the future as and they start seeing it, Maybe they created it. Maybe they put it out there. I know there's all kinds of concepts. That'll be later in my Patreon group. And we're going there for sure. This is big, guys. Really big. So now let's talk about the Fed now. As many of you know, I did a video a long time ago when Signature Bank failed. And I said it's bigger than Signature Bank because Signature Bank absolutely was not insolvent, period. You can look at the books. I looked it up myself. I was like, why are these people going under? This doesn't make any sense. They were bought up and they were bought up by a bridging company. I don't want to get too deep into this because there's like three letter agencies behind the whole thing and you get the point. They bought this bridging company. It's not a company, but you know what I'm saying. They bought up the technology in which Signature had. They didn't have to buy it because Signature, gee, they went belly up. And then the assets on the books were obtained by certain agencies. And then they created that technology, which Signature owned outright with underneath their roof. They used that immediately after that. 
all of a sudden Fed now becomes caught up technologically and allows itself to trade globally. Sorry, within the U.S. All of that is happening now. And I don't know if you guys have heard, I'm sure you have. All of that is working through Ripple. XRP is going to be used in this system. It's clear as day. They're already talking about it. All you need to do is look at Uphold and what they're doing and the way they're using that tech and you're going to be able to cash out with XRP through the Fed system, the Fed now system. This is all linked together. And those of you who want to tell me that you people who own XRP, the army members have been crazy as loons for all these years are about to figure out what's really happening behind the scenes. And then you're going to be the, you're going to be standing on the outside going, well, you know, I got these Cardano coins and I love Cardano. Don't get me wrong. I'm not bagging on anybody else's coins. That's not what I'm saying in this video. What I'm saying is, is there's people that have been patient and waited because they've known what I know and 10 times more about what I know about this coin and the research we've done and the bank documents that we've seen and the bankers I've talked to. The people who look like players on the periphery, the outside of this thing, and they look like players, and you say, "Well, I don't understand why. You know, why are why are people from, you know, Rose Rios and all these people? Why are these people connected to that coin? And how come? And how do we fit this puzzle together?" And I get people sending me document after document after document. Now, I don't like the documents that are bagging on other people's coins. I don't care to destroy somebody else's future or, or hopes and dreams about what they think their coin or token is going to be. That's not my scam. That's not my scene. That's, that, I don't dig any of that stuff at all, man. It really kind of brings me down when I hear people tell me, oh, this coin is corrupt or that coin. And, you know, and then I heard all these people telling me about how bad Ethereum was for all these years. And then now all of a sudden, hey, well, wait a minute. We're going to create a stable coin with, with Ripple uh, on the Ethereum network. Hey, we like Ethereum all of a sudden. Come on, guys. We're all in this together. We're a family. This is happening now, and I'm so excited. I don't know if you can tell, but I'm pretty wound up about this one. I really like what's happening. Now, let's go back to stable coin and what that means in the big picture. Big, 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 big picture. If you believe in... Nasra and Jasra and all that other stuff that's going on in the background and some of it I do some of it I don't and I think it could be possible in many ways and I know there's all the Ashita's gold and I got all that and I've done all that research many years ago and there's a lot of great great points with all of that I don't know I, I it's it's beyond me at this point it's not my game at all but when I speak to people like I just did the other day on the phone who are high-ranking bankers and they're like, this is big, Alan. This, no, when you see that, when that comes out, when you've reached that level, that means it's already done. It's already been there. You and I already know about ISO 222. We, you and I have already gone down that road. And I've been telling bankers about this good friends of mine for a year or two, two years now. And they're like, well, okay, ha, okay, well that, oh, they did that? Oh, they announced that with the Fed now? Oh, they, the, oh, really? Oh, really? And the Brits and HSBC and everybody else is involved? Oh, let me look into that. Let me, oh, wow. Huh, you might be onto something there. It's turning, guys. In other words, the giant is waking. And the giant is the coin you own. And that giant is 60 cents, for God's sakes. 60 cents. And anybody who tells you that, oh, yeah, well, as soon as they created that, you know, that stable coin, uh, that, there's no use case for it. Are you out of your mind? Listen. Listen to this, guys. Let's go back to this now. Why would you want to link a coin to the U.S. dollar or the Mexican peso when they're printing them like confetti? You wouldn't link your coin to that. 
That's the difference. A coin, limited and scarce, we understand how many of them there are, and they're burning these coins, making it greater than a value of a dollar, okay? And the dollar printing more and more and more to infinity, and they will, until the whole thing blows up. And they will go, they're going to continually print this thing, which devalues it, inflates it, and devalues it, while this thing in value, it, it becomes more and more scarce and valuable. Think about that. Why would you link the two together? No, you need the stable coin to be linked to the dollar. Why? Because you want to get out of the coin, into the stable coin, through the Fed now, through many other different systems that are all going to be linked universally, and you're going to be able to get out of your coin seamlessly for the moment that you need the dollar for the cash to pay the bill, to pay to buy a car, to buy a house, or whatever your situation might be, and then get back into your coin. But you don't want your assets or your value value sitting in anything, and that's what the banks were figuring out, which is exactly the 800-pound gorilla in the room that I was telling you about. You don't want to be stuck holding your assets in dollars like banks are. You want to be out of that because they're decreasing in value, inflating in number, and have no set amount. So the new assets of the planet are gold, real estate, crypto, okay? Not stocks. I said in the last video, they printed millions of those things, billions. Okay, you don't want that. I'm just saying, I'm not financial advice, but I'm just saying the banks are, their hand is being forced to own crypto. They're going to have to transact, like I just said, all brokerages, all banks are going to have to have a stable coin. They're going to have a stable coin. They're going to want a stable coin. Why? Because you don't want to own your collateral or your physical assets in something that they're just going to print more and more and more and more of. That's going to be your liquidity. Your liquidity is going to be endless. That means they're going to tokenize all valuable things. I'm talking about the tokenization of everything. Mr. Fink talks about this a lot lately. I think you guys all get it. You don't want anything of value being stuck or associated to a dollar. You want it being stuck and associated with something of collateral or worth in a uh, limited amount. Long way of saying, you want to own crypto, gold, real estate. You don't want to own dollars or cash they're going to they're going to recreate the dollar in thousands of different I shouldn't say thousands 190 different currencies around the world and all the people in all the other countries again let's remember the US dollar is the clean shirt and the dirty hamper pile okay they are going to be the one everybody wants to be in well, that's great if you live in Mexico or Zimbabwe or whatever, right? That's great. <clears throat> but if you live in the U.S., you're not going to want to be in the dollar because it's still, it's still declining. You're going to want to be in the new world assets. The other countries are going to be very happy to be outside of their currency, okay? The peso in this case because it's going to gain strength annually. That means you're going to gain 10 to 15, 20% annually be of, because they're going to inflate faster, okay? Inflation around the world is going to ramp up in real terms. My opinion, my show, love you guys. I can't wait to do the next show. The next show, I have this fun and happy little concept that I was going to do with you guys today. But the, this conversation had to be said because stable coins are being misunderstood. They're, people, are not, people don't get the association between an XRP and a stable coin. And the stable coin is a completely different thing. And I hope I explain that in my way of explaining things. And I hope it well, resonates with you guys. If you like this kind of content, my show, my son and I do a live stream on Sundays, uh, midday. Check us out. Uh, 
and we also have a Patreon channel. But uh, we love you guys, and uh, I think that's about it for today. Uh, it was a big week. I can't wait for next week, and uh, you guys have a great, great weekend, and I will catch you next week. Love you all. Yeah. Yeah, I know. My face is red. I know. Because there's like this red wall right here and I I want to I want to paint it black. Wait a minute. I see a red door. I want to paint it black. That would make a really good song. In fact, I think I'm going to sit down and write that. Yeah. Yeah, that'd be, that'd be a catchy little tune. Love you.